rates of change as a two-unit idea we have encountered already. It's very, very simple. Think about this, right? When we say something like this, right? We write dy or dx and we use that as our notation for differentiating versus this notation for integrating. Now, you will recall that these notations each come from somewhere, right? They each come from somewhere. This elongated S, right, is actually kind of borrowed from sig notation, right? It's like, look, I'm adding up a whole bunch of things, and that's why it's S for sums, yeah? I'm adding things up, and it's just that, well, the sigma's already been used for that, and so we use this notation because it's like, yeah, it's got the same kind of callback. It has the same sort of, like, you remember, sigma notation, it's got, you've seen this in induction recently, it's got that value at the bottom, which is like where you start, that value at the top, which is where you end, and that's where these um, lower and upper bounds come from, yeah? Now, this notation for the derivatives, which we developed much earlier, also has a similar kind of story. Good morning. It's written as a ratio between two things, like something over something. Ratio between what and what? When we first met derivatives, what's the top coming from and what's the bottom coming from? This is just, a, this is just gradient, isn't it? It's rise over run. And we read this as, we read that D as, it's kind of standing for delta, which we mean is like change, yeah? Which we see in kind of a, um, you know, in a, a chemical reaction, for those of you who do chemistry, of which I'm not one, right? Uh, we say you start with some stuff, some kind of change happens, usually the change is like heat or whatever it is, and then you get something at the other end, okay? So uh, delta, the Greek letter delta corresponding to our letter D, that's what that refers to, okay? Change in Y, I want to compare that to the change in X. Okay. Now, when we look at rates of change, rates of change, when you hear the word rate, basically what you're meaning is something is changing over time, right? So instead of dy on dx, it's going to be d something over dt, right? So I want to investigate how some particular quantity is changing with respect to time. Okay. Now, what we add as extension one student is what are called related rates. The idea being, and um, here's an example, you've got different kinds of things within the situation that are all changing with respect to time. And these things are connected to each other, right? So let's actually have a look at this question and then we'll start to unpack. The sand is being poured on the top of the pile at the rate of, and then they give you a number. Okay, so stop for a moment and just try to get a picture in your head. I hope you haven't looked at the next picture and sort of spoiled it for yourself. There is a pile of sand and it's growing and growing and growing. Now, if you're just like, if you're not mucking around with it, you don't have like a bucket or something like that. What is the shape of this pile of sand as you're pouring, right? Yeah, and it's gonna be conical, isn't it? Because it starts on this little spot and it, it grows up and up and up, but obviously because it's unstable, it can't just grow like a tower, okay? So it sort of just pans out like this, okay? So draw with me, let's draw a diagram. And for all rates of change questions, but particularly related rates questions, your diagram, you will live or die on the basis of your diagram, okay? So, good morning. Don't make this too small, we're gonna to have to do some labeling on it and so on. You suggested to me that there's going to be this conical shape. Okay, so I'm gonna draw it. So, so here's my pile of sand, yep. And importantly, what I'm drawing here represents the pile of sand at an instant in time. So this pile of sand, at some point in time, it, it didn't exist, it was a tiny little dot. And then further in time, it's gonna get bigger, right? So this represents, like I, I snapped a photo, okay? So I'm trying to represent change, but I have to do it in a static medium. So this is my pile of sand at a particular moment. It's being poured onto the top of a pile. So here comes the sand, up here. And so this cone is getting larger and larger at the rate of three meters cubed per minute. Okay, let's just write that down for a second. Three meters cubed per minute. Okay. Now you remember I said to you, in rates of change land, instead of dy on dx, it'll be d something on dt. You're going to get dt over and over and over again. And the way you can know is when you look at this, if I write this in the same form that I've got here, which it almost is, right? I would write this as 3 meters cubed over 1 minute, really. That's, is, is, when I say 3 meters per minute, I mean 3 meters, sorry, 3 meters cubed. 3 meters cubed per 
individual bit, right? So there's really a comparison of two units here, which is what makes it a rate. And you can see here, it tells you what it is, right? This is our DT because minutes are a unit of time. They could just as easily be hours or days or seconds if we wanted to. So you can see this is the <coughs> DT or the bottom. Meters cubed, what's that a measure of? It's a, it's a unit of volume, isn't it? Okay. So up on the top here, I'm going to call this, and by convention we usually use a capital V. We, um, we tend to reserve the lowercase v for velocity, which we'll talk about later with the motion. So this is my rate of change of the volume of the pile of sand. And it's important because this is related rates, and we're going to have lots of different derivatives flying around. You remember I said to you right at the beginning when um, people introduced this notation and they also introduced this notation, right? Now that we're in related <coughs> rates land, right, this dash notation becomes completely insufficient because it's kind of like what's being differentiated with respect to what? Just state it. Just state it. You're not really, like people say, oh, it's faster. Not really, okay? So I've got a change of the volume with respect to time. The pile always remains in the shape of a cone, <coughs> spoilers, with semi-vertical angle 45 degrees. Now that's a bit of specific language there. So the semi-vertical angle, semi-vertical angle, uh, it's half of some particular angle. Where is this angle? Where do you think it is? Yeah, it's going to be up there at the top, yeah? So I'm going to actually put in a vertical line here so it's perpendicular to the base. Like so. And the 45 degrees that they're thinking of, you can, um, I mean, in this case, you actually could draw it on either side because 45 degrees is going to be equal. But what they really need is the inside angle here. How do you know that? Okay. Um, how do you say that? Well, you're really describing the shape. There's two reasons you can know. They're describing the shape of the cone, not the shape of the not cone. So the, um, the other angle, I suppose you'd say the angle of depression is outside the cone. So you're not actually yeah, describing the cone the anymore. Base angle. Sorry, say that again. The base angle of the cone. You mean down here? Yeah. Well, that would come from this angle, right? Now, the reason I know this angle is up here and not down there is because it's the semi-vertical angle, so I'm measuring from the vertical, oh. okay? So as opposed to, um, it'd be from the horizontal, I guess, but I've never seen something referred to as a semi-horizontal okay. angle. Okay, so there you go. There's my picture. And then they ask us a couple of questions. Now, before we look at these questions, I want you to just note, like, sorry, before we solve these questions, I want you to note that these are these related rates, right? Now I'm trying to think about the rate of the height changing. So I'm after not dv on dt, but dh on dt. And the base area, so I guess by convention we call that dA on dt. Okay? 